Okay, so, in case it isn't already obvious to you, I'm going to be going through the ages in the same order I did in my LP. Now, I'm going to assume you watched part one of the series, so because I already covered all the details and how the 3D environment generally works, and I also went through how to set it up, you should expect the pace to be a little quicker this time around. So prepare to be constantly entertained. Well, maybe not right here. As you can see here, all I did was modify the initiation file to have us spawn on the mechanical age with zero gravity. And just like on Mist Island, the result is we end up too high. Although that doesn't seem to affect the clipping around here. Now you can see up ahead that there's no way we're going to be fitting through that doorway anymore. So we're going to be plowing straight into the wall right above it. Um, it's not really a surprise that it turns out to be a fake. Or that it's only visible on one side. We saw plenty of examples of this on Mist Island. But I don't remember anything quite like this white blob back here. Um, it turns out that as you approach the center of the fortress, it really blows up for some reason. Ah, see? I don't really know why it does this. Um, you can kind of see it moving along with the clouds and also introducing new blocks as, uh, as they move along. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe what I'm seeing here. And as you head toward the back of the fortress, everything kind of just reappears and disappears and... Why this happens in the middle of the fortress, I don't think I'll ever know. Now you see this little gap in the track back here? I don't know why it's there, but it kind of gives away the fact that the fortress doesn't actually rotate. Because the fortress rotates while you're in a completely different universe, there was no reason for them to animate any of the rotating mechanisms. That's too complicated. Instead, when you set the fortress to face a certain way, they just move everything to face that direction, including the track and all the pillars. Now, when I turn around here, you'll get to see what the back of the fortress looks like. But I want you to try to picture it in your mind first and see how accurate you are. You ready for this? Yeah, there is no back of the fortress. Um, there is no back wall of the fortress, and you can't see the inside of the front wall either. Um, I guess this really isn't much of a surprise if you think about it. They're going to go for a minimalist design and only concern themselves with what they think the player is going to see. But if we float our way over here, we can really see the, um, the dividing line between truth and illusion. Speaking of illusion, I'm going to do a quick swapping out of gravity settings. There we go. Totally did that in game. And the ocean here turns out to have a floor texture so we don't just fall through like on Mist Island. This is actually the only age in the game that does this, um, so that's pretty convenient. Well, I guess you can see what it's like on this level anywhere else, but you'd have to actually sink just below the floor and then save and load your game and pop up here with zero gravity, I don't know. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but here it's really convenient. Um, that's actually really the only reason why we're down here is because it's easy to do. Um, and I guess the view around here is a little silly. Obviously you got this back of the wall texture effects and disappearance and everything. Um, pretty much everything down here is um, has no clipping. You can see we can just kind of pass right through all these little pillars. Um, this is kind of a weird view down here. And we can also pass through the big gears under the fortress. This is kind of a weird effect as the waves pop up above this black surface, whatever this is for. Um, oh, and I bet you've always wanted to travel through here. Well, you always do in the flyby, but that doesn't really count, does it? But here we go. Eee! Yes, this is, um, this is, this is, uh, where it's at. It's exactly what we always wanted to do. Um, from here you can see just how stripped down this is. 
even just the back sides of these gears over here, which have to be present during the flyby. When during the flyby, you actually stand over here, or you fly through this spot, as when you look at the mechanical age. But then they took these little spots out of the gears when you actually land on the island. Uh, I don't know how much effort that takes, um, but it is kind of a funny little nuance nonetheless. Um, really, the only thing that's worth seeing, I guess, down here on this level um, would be this weird little surface down here. This, you know, this little box thing is, of course, the little passage you go down to get to the Mechanical Age book, or the Mist book. But for some reason on this side, this surface, I guess this is a new type of texture that we have have not seen around here yet. Um, on the uh, surface, it uh, looks like it would be like a reflective surface, but it's not. I mean, it's clearly not. You can see through it, but it's... I don't know. It's You don't see the water through most of it, except for like these little... There are a few little spots where the water kind of peeks through. Yeah, there's another one right there. Um... But other than that, it makes kind of makes the water uh, disappear, and this gear stays, but that gear disappears. <laughs> I, I don't understand the physics or the logic of this at all, but um, it's certainly not a mirror effect, and it's certainly not a window effect. You can pass right through it, and from the side, you can't tell it's even there. I don't know. I just kind of thought that was interesting. It's, eh. It's a little weird, but... Um, yeah, I think that's really about all there is to see on this level. So let's move on. And here we are inside the fortress. Which, oh yeah, the fortress is down here. Um, I don't need to explain to you how I got here, right? I mean, you already know how this works. Many of the indoor ceilings don't actually exist, so you just flip gravity around and float right out the top. This is kind of a weird example, though, because the ceiling in that hallway does exist. It's just the one in the stairwell doesn't. Um, but that's not what I'm here to show you. I just did all that so I could land on the other side of this wall right here. Well, you can't see it. You can only see its counterpart over there. Um, as well as this floating lantern. Anyway, during normal gameplay, you would, of course, be standing on the stairwell out there and you would see its reflection on the two metal panels on either side. But the fact that we're able to stand on one of these reflections starts to give away how the lie was being told. What they actually did was they just put three separate parallel stairways next to each other. And, um, well, the, uh, the gravity setting is making it hard just to walk down stairs. Anyway, those metal panels? Instead of reflecting the image of the main stairway, they're actually just transparent, allowing you to see the other sets of stairs creating the illusion. So this is an actual legitimate applied usage for those weird translucent metal panels just like the one we saw outside. And you can also see how the stairs in the reflection here also have kind of a transparency to them to kind of accent the reflection effect because you can totally see through stairs when they're reflected in some way. I don't know, I'm not an artist. Anyway, the stairs clipping goes all the way out here. Well, we sunk a little bit, but yeah, we're still able to stand right here. And But if you back up anymore, we're gonna start sinking into the void, which, uh, yeah, I don't actually wanna do that. Uh, oh, here we go, yeah. So now we're eye level with the floor, um, and the fact that uh, <laughs> the fact that I landed on the edge of a step means turning makes me climb up and down it. Does this even happen when I'm a normal height? I don't even know. But this is not what I wanted to do either. What I really wanted to do <laughs> was get in there, which is going to be kind of tricky. Um, well, I mean, it's not tricky to get in there. That's trivial, but um, I actually want to get in there without any clipping. And I can't do that by floating through the, the ceiling because there's a room above it. So instead we're gonna have to use a different method. We're gonna have to uh, fall through the floor here. Um, yeah, so as we sink, I gotta time this just right.
There we go. Okay, so now that we're in the room with no clipping, all we have to do is reverse the gravity setting. And neutralize the gravity setting. Which, of course, now that means we can wander around this room and with no clipping and yeah, you know the drill. Um, yeah, if we were playing this game the way we were supposed to be playing it, we'd be stuck in that tiny little region right there, and we'd be blocked by these pipes right here. And wouldn't matter, it'd be fine, because, you know, there's the control right here. Um, but now that we can get into this, into the forbidden zone, we can see all the little flaws. Like, uh, they actually fade out the floor right here, so there's not actually anything over here. Um, also, you can see that this, this little knob here didn't get the full artistic rendering that all the other ones got. I don't think it has to do with the shadows or anything. I think it's because it's the one in the very back, so I guess they didn't think you could see it from over here. When you're standing over here, you're not really in a in a good enough position to really see it. I guess you can kind of see it, but... I don't know what height we're supposed to be at over here, though. I guess we're a little taller. No, that'd make it more visible. I don't know. For some reason, when I'm recording, also the height team... I tend to gain height a lot. You can see I'm actually higher up. I don't know, that's actually, that only happens while I'm recording video. I don't really know why that happens. I think it's always happened, it's just a lot more obvious when the gravity setting is weak. Or at zero, like it is now. Oh, um, when you're over here, since I, I'm in this, I'm now that I'm in the zone, uh, you might think that the clipping would kick back in, but in this case it doesn't. Um, but right here, if you go through the wall here, yeah, I'm actually going up the stairs. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that there are, remember there are three sets of stairs over here. I don't know if like somehow I'm still climbing them or something, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. It's just like those situations we looked at on Mist Island where you see the artifacts in one location, but the active clipping is from another. But now we seem to be stuck here with the gravity off, so it looks like that's all there. Um, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why it's still doing that. Okay, let's let's steady and fade. Okay, so I don't think it's possible to get rid of the hiccuping completely, but I did tweak with some things, and I do believe that I've at least reduced the amount of hiccuping significantly. Anyway, here we are in the middle of the fortress. I guess the first thing to notice is that, well, besides the fact we're just completely out of position here, the background color is the same as the color of the sky outside. Of course, I don't want to go that way because we've already been out there. But also I saved my game in this region for a reason, right? Now that reason wasn't just to see what the hallways look like from this vantage point. Even though I did take that into consideration, what I really want to do is I want to get into Akinar's room without clipping. Fortunately, you guys already know the basic trick for doing that. Um, and I don't want to step into the hallway here or else the clipping will kick back in. What I want to do is I want to position myself just beyond the portal and then turn to face his room. And voila, there we have it. We can slide around another room once again with no clipping. Now, you're probably wondering why I positioned myself so close to the floor. Well, there really isn't anything that significant to see in this room from down here. Unless you're just curious how your dog would see it. But that's not why I came in here. The real reason I'm doing this is so I can slip through the secret door right here. Wait a minute. Uh, anyway, yeah, I want to get through the door, but unfortunately that means I need to open it first. And apparently I'm too close to the floor to do that. Must have slightly misjudged my saving point. So I guess I need to wait for another hiccup or two here? Or I guess I can make my own. It always bumps when I start recording. There we go. You didn't miss anything, I just double tapped the record button. And the cursor is indicating that I can open the door now, but I gotta be careful here. I don't want to be too close to the door when I open it or I'll jump like five feet in the air for some reason. So I want to be as far away from the door as possible 
and now click the door. There we go. See, I didn't gain too much height that way. Um, and then, ooh, I'm starting to pop too high all of a sudden. Um, and I don't want to click here. You can see that you know how the mouse has changed. If I click here, then my character is going to kind of duck under the doorway, um, which is the proper way to enter the room. And as you probably know, we don't want to do things the way we're supposed to be doing it, or else that would ruin the whole point of the video. I want to slide in there by clicking next to it, right? And just scoot along in there. There we go. Okay, so now there's no clipping in this room either. Um, so I guess we can see what things look like closer to the ground. Um, I guess one thing we can do is get up close and personal with the freaky dead face. And why is it a severed head anyway? The coffin's big enough to fit the whole body. Maybe their faces were upside down. Also from the back side you can see that there is no um, back side of the chest here so even when I close it you can still kind of peek through the the coffin and see the yeah. And another thing we can do is with no clipping we can slip into Akinar's cage here and electrocute ourselves. Yeah that's brutal. I hope you weren't expecting a death animation or something. Come on, people, we're dealing with glitches here. But what is perhaps more interesting has to do with the red and blue pages. You know that this is the room, of course, where we can pick up the blue page. Um, if we think about the layout of the fortress here, I guess Akinar's room, of course, would be out there, and the hallway to the front door would be over there somewhere. So Sirius's room should be somewhere like over here, right? Well, if we go through the wall, because it's since there's no clipping, look at this. Yeah, here's the red page. It's right in our face. Now, I can't actually pick it up. Um, yeah, it's not actually available to me. So why would it be here? It's obviously out of place. Of course, I'm no authority on the subject, but as far as I can tell, this is how the game keeps track of the pages. If I was already carrying the red page, this wouldn't be here until I tried to pick up the blue page, which is exactly how the pages work in the actual game. So for one reason or another, something about the way the game is coded compelled them to make the page present in this region, and it wasn't enough to have it just disappear from your inventory. And as I just mentioned, this appears to be about the spot in the fortress where you would expect to see the page. However, I can't prove it, nor do I know if it has anything to do with the game mechanics, so it's all just conjecture. Um, and now this is that awkward moment where we come to the horrifying realization that it is impossible to leave Akinar's dungeon. See, what happened is that the door closed behind us. Now, it's not supposed to close behind us. In normal gameplay, it stays open as long as we're in here. But the reason why it closed was that basically, you know, we're fooling the game. It doesn't really quite understand where we are. If you're in Akinar's room and you back away from the door, then it automatically closes. So that's kind of what it thinks we're doing. We're backing away from the door while we're in Akinar's room, even though that's wrong, right? Because we screwed the game up. Now, it looks like from here, the way the mouse is behaving, that uh, maybe we can escape through the door and end up back in Akinar's room. Uh, no, um, it just does the ducking animation, and now we're at a normal height, but we're not any better off, obviously. But I guess the good news is that we can now torture ourselves like a normal person. I mean, not a normal person, like a normal height person. One last thing, though, that's really weird about uh, the world back here, um, as we've discovered in many other places, when we're in these rooms with no clipping, it's not that there really is no clipping, it's that the clipping is elsewhere in the room, right? If you want to call it a room. And it reflects one of the other regions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the WASD keys to kind of highlight that. Like right now, I'm pressing the A key. So I should be moving left, but it's like having it's like rubbing up against a wall right here or something. And if I press D, it same kind of thing happens. It's kind of weird how there's like this clipping right here. I can't even get back into the room from this angle. 
uh, you have to go through here or I don't even know <laughs> exactly where the where it is but uh, if you finagle with this enough you, you'll eventually end up back in the room but I don't even want to go back in the room what I want to do is I think where's the red page there it is it's somewhere I think it's about right here and we can keep all of a sudden the walls disappear and we can back up and just as the room disappears Now isn't that interesting? All of a sudden the music for the mist book plays. Now how far away is that? That's like three or four regions, right? You go from Akinar's dungeon to Akinar's room, then to the fortress hallways, and then outside the fortress, and finally to the chamber with the mist book in it. That's four different portals to pass through. But for some reason that's the music that's kicking in here. And I assume has something to do with why we weren't hearing anything before. So the game has no idea where we are. Are we in the dungeon, or in his main room, or the mist book room? You can make a case for all three. And um, honestly, I think I lost my location because I bumped the mouse. You know what? I think I'm completely lost now. I am pressing the arrow keys, hopelessly lost in here because I, I try. I meant to continue to face the um, the room so I wouldn't lose it, but I can't get back there. Oh well, it doesn't matter anyway because that's already what I wanted to show you. I've already shown you everything I wanted to show you. Um, so I guess we can move on to the next thing, which will be... The Other Secret Room! Which implies we are permanently trapped once again, but that doesn't matter. Um, I'm not gonna run around here like I did in the other room. It's basically the same stuff going on as before. And besides, we're too close to the ground to see the blue page. Um, the real reason I'm in here is I just want to show you something I thought was kind of cool regarding Akinar's letter to Cirrus. Um, you might figure that the rolled up piece of paper you see here is just some dummy sheet they put here just to take up space. Um, and they only load the words to the letter when you click on it. But it turns out that's not the case. It, now that we can zoom in as close as we want to on this thing, we can see that it is, in fact, Akinar's genuine letter to Sirius here. You can start to read all the text here. And, uh, that's all I have for this clip. I thought it was interesting enough to warrant its own separate video. Did you think it was lame? Alright, how about this? Aha! It shows up behind the wood! Um... No, I think the other part was cooler. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know what that was. Um, anyway, moving on. Now, if you thought that was lame, get a load of this. You remember how this puzzle works, right? You try to access the controls on top of the elevator. Um, first, you press the middle button on the elevator and it gives you time to step outside before it heads down. Um, but apparently you don't have to step out of here when the gravity is on a weak setting. Yeah, it just uh, pastes you to the ceiling and then ejects you out the top. Um, I think it's kind of interesting here that there is actually clipping on top of the elevator here because we're not even really supposed to be standing up here, but uh, yeah, either way, uh, we get access to this and we can, you know, I mean, the game's obviously working the same as it always did. Um. But yeah, there really isn't anything else to see up here. Well, okay, I guess there's one thing. Um, yeah, the gear's back here. It looks like all we have to do is break the clipping and we can play around with them, but it turns out the gears are an illusion. But to see this, we're gonna have to look at it from the other side of the wall. Yeah, here we are behind the wall now. And as you can see, or not see those gears that are supposed to be here. Um, in order to get them to show up, I actually have to stand in the doorway here. Um, and then, yeah, there they go. See, they just pop right into existence. Um, you may recall something similar to this happening in the tower on Mist Island. Apparently, this is another example of that. It's another one of those fake portal things. 
So these gears are not actually right here in front of me. They're somewhere in some other universe somewhere, and this is just a portal viewing them. I obviously have no idea what the motivation is for programming the gears this way. But um, speaking of fake portals, there's also one in this room, though there's probably not much suspense as to where it is. But before we look at that, I want to first take a look at the telescope while we're still eye level with it before the hiccups kick in. And oh yeah, when the cursor is doing that, um, it disables the W key as well, so I have to avert my gaze in order to move forward. Um, but what I wanted to point out here was, doesn't it look like the telescope is not actually pointing at the window? Looks like it's pointing, hitting the metal there. Um, and also I have no idea how it actually generates the image on the telescope because it's just there's nothing actually in here. Um, but yeah, let's go look at the uh, the fake portal here. You can see you get a pretty good view of it, but it's doing the same thing as it did in other places. If we try to actually pass through it, it disappears. But yeah, um, where did it go? There it is. Um, if you get right on the edge, see it disappears all at once there. Um, and, oh yeah, there's not going to be a back of the clock tower. That's kind of a common feature we've seen. By the way, this uh, clock tower is not a model of the tower on Mist Island. It's actually a model of the one on the Solanitic Age. I couldn't mention that in my LP because of the order I visited the ages. Um, and here are the other models. Not as much to say about them, but still cool to look at. Oh, my favorite toy. Yeah, I can't pass this up. The way the, uh, yeah, I can't move forward. Um, the way the bird here works is, uh, it shakes its head back and forth once for every revolution here, I think. Let's see, one, two, and three, and one, two, three. Ha! I don't know, why did I even bother with that? Um. <laughs> Uh, next is the tapestry. Um, yeah, look at the way the guy is facing. And here he's facing the other way. Um, yeah, there actually are two sides of the tapestry here. I, I actually would have just expected it to disappear on the other side, but they actually made this one double-sided. Um, yeah, the music is still doing that weird thing where the other theme starts playing whenever I face the doorway. And it's still doing that, even though it's also playing the correct music on top of it this time. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. And here's the Napola series. Yeah, when I made my LP, I had not looked at the original painting of Napoleon in a long time, and I also didn't really pay too much attention to this one. So I didn't realize this, but that actually is Cirrus's face pasted over Napoleon's. I don't know if that's supposed to depict Cirrus for the imperialist he is? But to me, it just comes across as a joke. It doesn't have the same somber tone as the rest of the game. It's just silly. Maybe they want it that way. I don't know. And see, these things have that same thing where when my hand is open like this, I can't press W to move forward. Yeah, I have to avert the mouse to the side in order to move forward. And here's what the room looks like from the outside. See how the Napoleon painting disappears when we're over here? It doesn't have a back side like the tapestry does. Look how far above the telescope we are now. Yeah, we can't exactly pass through the barrel anymore. So yeah, I don't know where it's pulling this image. Um, Because when I look around the telescope and I look around outside, I don't see the skeleton at all. It only shows up when I look through the lens. But it's not entirely isolated, though, because you can see the sky color change behind it. And another thing I didn't mention in my LP, according to Cyan, this guy's nickname is Bob. Nobody knows his real name because he's too ancient of a pirate peon for anyone to care. Meaning there was no record of it. So we just call him Bob because the name John Doe is boring. And the reason I looked at this last yeah, maybe this is familiar too. 
It's pretty much the same circumstance too, right? However, if I had sat in Cirrus' throne instead, then I wouldn't be stuck. Instead, I would have fixed the clipping, which is far less desirable than this in my opinion. Anyway, I got one last thing to show you here. And we're back outside, so this video's gone full circle. The reason for this is that there's something out here I didn't show you before. Uh, first off, I went the long way around, but we're essentially just standing on the other side of the telescope window. Uh, so the fortress is still facing to the north, and you can see the weird hollowed out effect again. Of course, that's the, the eastern island where Bob is hiding. So the southern island should be over there. Oh yeah. You totally didn't expect to see this, did you? This is a counterpart to the fake portal leading back into Cirrus's room. Now, <laughs> why in the world is this here? It's not like this thing is necessary or else we would have seen one on the tower on Mist Island. In fact, this is the only time I'm aware of this happening at all. Though maybe I just haven't looked hard enough, who knows. Um, the only reason I can imagine they put this here is that it somehow helped them measure where to put the window in Cirrus's room to get a proper view. But that doesn't really work either because when you look at this, they're way off. I mean, the window is not even close to the fortress, so I don't see how that is a viable theory. Oh well, um, <laughs> no matter what, I do find this to be the best decor imaginable to complement a half-fortress. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. That's my thorough probing of the mechanical age. Um, turned out to be more extensive than I originally envisioned, but, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Oh, but, uh, no, that's not why my channel was dormant for as long as it was. This takes a lot of work, but not that much work. Honestly, 2014 was just kind of a rough year for me, which is why I didn't upload anything, but I promise things will be better in 2015. In fact, it already is better. I've got some things cooking behind the scenes and some strategies for resurrecting the channel. I'm still working things out, but I'll give you guys a channel update soon.